Remember the scene in Ready Player One where Wade Watts purchases the X1 haptic boot suit and can now interact and play in the world of the Oasis like never before? Well, the movie may have been considered science fiction, but it's slowly becoming a reality. Haptic technology has improved leaps and bounds in recent years, including a new VR synthetic skin that will change gaming forever. How does the technology actually work? How will it be implemented with the PS5 and Xbox Series X? And what are some of the hurdles the suit must overcome before we're snatching up an outfit for ourselves? Well, we have all the answers, including a connection to the PSVR 2 rumored for release sometime in 2021. We're living right on the cusp of true virtual gaming. VR headsets allow us to explore virtual worlds like never before, but the key is to take advantage of all five senses. We have sight and hearing. Taste and smell are probably a long way away, but one element needed to take VR gaming to the next level? Touch. Haptic suit technology allows players to feel vibrations and expand on the suits. But the tech has been clunky and unreliable over the years. Seriously, you shouldn't feel like Randy all bundled up in a Christmas story just to play a video game. Well, this is where the VR synthetic skin comes in. Thin and lightweight, developers at Northwestern University have created a thin VR skin that they refer to as Epidermal VR. Let's check out some of the highlights. The skin is battery-free, relies on near-field communication tech, and requires no straps or tape to connect to a person. It all sounds too good to be true. Their initial test kits include a small patch of skin and a graphical interface which gives real-time results when connected to human skin. The key to the VR immersion is the small sensors which would go all over your skin. Remember all the scars Killmonger had in Black Panther? Well, this is essentially what the suit will look like. But don't worry, you're not about to become a human DualShock controller that just randomly vibrates with every action. The sensors each work on their own, to target specific areas of the body and at different intensity levels. Still in the early stages of development, the technology could advance greatly within the next couple of years, especially as more companies get in on the tech. As the university expands the use of the skin, they plan to add more features, including thermal heating. Imagine playing Minecraft, picking up a lava stone, and feeling the actual heat in your hands. Pretty cool, right? Weather elements could completely change in games. Love exploring Los Santos and GTA V? Well, imagine feeling the heat of the sun on your neck or a random rain shower pouring over your shoulders. All of this is possible with the new skin. With the launch of the Xbox Series X and PS5 coming, the next generation consoles offer the power and impressive graphics to make the synthetic skin a reality. Players are looking for the next big thing, and improved graphics is only one way to draw new players in. Xbox already has the kinetic software to build the suit's features into, and the PS5 has something even better, the PSVR. The virtual reality headset was a hit for the PS4, and will be compatible with the PS5. There are also rumors and news popping up on the daily about the PSVR 2. The 4K headset would greatly improve the visuals and the interactive nature of the device. But a haptic suit would be the key to taking virtual reality to the next level. Considering the PSVR headset retailed for around $400 when first released, we imagine a full body suit costing at least $600 or more. Not a cheap price, especially with an untested market. So as the technology advances, we're at least two years away from any type of release or connection with the new consoles. A standalone system would be harder to sell, so connecting with the game console players already have in their home would be the best solution. Players wouldn't have to worry about signing up for new game accounts or having so many separate systems. The Xbox Game Pass or the PlayStation Now service could even tie in to a variety of VR games with suit compatibility. In the early stages, players probably don't want to drop 60 to 70 bucks for a game. A collection of sample games could perk interest. And while we have our hopes up for battery-free and lightweight VR skin systems, we don't want to get our hopes up too much. Over the years, we've seen prototypes and actual releases of VR tech that didn't quite deliver on the premise. Nintendo has tried and failed multiple times. Think of the clunky and awkward Power Glove or the massive failure known as the Nintendo Virtual Boy. In more recent years, Disney even jumped into the haptic suit game with a product dubbed the Force Jacket. Instead of vibrations, the VR tech relies on a suit filled with small airbags which would react to the visual scene. One example included the feeling of a snake slithering around your body. While the tech looks promising and definitely could be used in theme parks, the current design requires a pretty large air compressor to inflate and deflate the bags over and over again. Not exactly the type of thing you'd want to set up in your living room. 
air compressors are really loud. The designs are pretty similar to other products we've seen on the market, like the 3RD Space Vest. The vests were designed for players to feel gunshots and other elements of first-person shooter games like Call of Duty and Half-Life 2. Ultimately, the haptic products did not break into the mainstream like companies wished. They weren't enough to get players off the couch and into a full-body interactive world. While implementation of a VR synthetic skin will make sense for shooters, the use of the tech could expand greatly in so many genres of games. We already touched upon the heat felt in Minecraft, but imagine feeling a battle with a creeper. The pang of pain as you chop down wood or the impact when you fall from a large structure. Imagine a zombie survival game where you actually feel a zombie bite right into your shoulder. A simulation game where you feel ocean waves crash against your skin. As the sensitivity improves in the suit's development, so many aspects of the game will feel more realistic. And then there's a whole genre of sports games. Football jukes, basketball dunks, and baseball bat swings would feel more realistic than ever before. A tackle could be felt in your ribs. A hockey game would feel like a workout on your body. The tech development company Vodafone has already produced a haptic suit known which utilizes electro-stimulation. If the suit's features mix with the VR synthetic skin from Northwestern, we could be looking at a device that provides the more realistic head-to-toe virtual experience. Considering the world's focus on social distancing, the synthetic skin could be the ultimate solution for human contact, while remaining not just six feet apart, but six whole countries apart. Besides the use in gaming, examples of the skin have showcased social media connections and interactions. For example, two people who wear the glove versions of the skin could hold hands from miles and miles away, with the sensitivity to feel fingers, palms, and pressure. Now more than ever, the technology could be readily accepted as many forms of social distancing become a part of everyday life. But we can't jump on the VR bandwagon just yet. Our skeptical mind is reaching out to ask some questions and present some of the more common problems. For example, the Vodafone suit touts the ability to feel tackles from other rugby players using wireless 5G technology. The key to the tackle? The player making the tackle slams his body into a padded cylinder. So how would we be able to make a tackle in a future Madden VR game? Would we need to tackle dummies in our living rooms? Would man caves turn into VR centers? We already went through the crazy buying spree purchasing useless add-ons for our Wii controllers. Look, it's now a golf club. And now those are mostly garbage. So on top of purchasing a full body suit, we would need VR props to go along with them. Oof, the price would be through the roof. And how about the impact of a tackle? Sure, anyone could transform into a digital Superman, whip their arms around, and flip a digital car or two, but what difference does a tackle make when you have an NFL pro like Clay Matthews in the suit, as opposed to the everyday Clay Johnson? In other words, do we actually need the strength and agility to perform these moves and be good in a game? It's different tapping down on the A button to make Mario do a super jump. How high would Mario actually get if we had to jump in person? The real-life movements could actually lead to some real-life injuries. If you're feeling and reacting to all the elements in the game, it's going to be even harder to avoid obstacles around you. We can already see the VR fail videos now. Safety has to be a major concern as the synthetic skin moves into a testing stage. The whole point is to have lightweight technology. A bulky helmet and knee pads could take away from the experience. The experience also needs to have game companies on board. Do the companies adapt current games or develop all new ones? Games will need to map out the entire human body and create impact points. The tech will show the difference between a sniper shot in Fortnite and getting blasted by a grenade. The body mapping requires a lot of details, multiple sensitivities, and the developers to ensure everything feels accurate. What happens when your game lags or the internet connection slows down? All of a sudden, you're feeling shots in your stomach when you didn't even see the bullets. The whole process could become frustrating and quickly cause players to lose interest. The key for synthetic skin will be moving beyond the gimmick of the idea and creating technology for practical uses. And this is where the success lies. The synthetic skin is not like the Nintendo Virtual Boy. It's not just for playing an all-red graphical version of Super Mario Bros. The skin has use outside of games that will help propel research, software, and global implementation. Let's look at the sports use besides just games like Madden. Players can train without direct contact with other players reducing concussions but still providing physical feedback. The vibrations help create muscle memories for throws, tackles, leg movements, and footwork. 
Advancements will help elite players become even more elite, and training year-round could be done virtually from any location. The tech also has the ability to work with anyone who has lost a limb, including soldiers. The tech will provide them with ways to feel again using artificial limbs and expand to everyday use. The suits will also work both ways to provide information and details. For example, the haptic suit known as the Tesla suit has several features which cater to athletic training and build. The haptic vibrations focus on various parts of the body. Measurement tools calculate stress and fitness activities. A motion tracker will showcase precise movements. The trackers could be used to show changes over time for individuals. In the video game world, we can track our own movements and even create digital characters who are based on our own actions and mannerisms. Yeah, The Sims VR could become a majority reality. Guess we are even closer to Ready Player One's Oasis than we ever realized. We are definitely hyped up for the new VR skin, even though it's likely years away. What game would you want to use the skin the most in? What features are appealing? Or is the skin just too gimmicky and hard to use? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more great content.